that persuasion is something that works most of the time. Uh, I always say that if you can increase your batting average, you're probably going to do a lot better than most people. So as we go through this, this isn't meant that this works every time on every person 100% of the time. But it does work for most people. So keep that in mind as we go through. Okay, let's see if technology will work. Ah. So there's ten laws. We're going to cover five. And just to give you a background of where this comes from, uh, Dr. Kevin Hogan is out of Minneapolis. He's been doing research on persuasion and influence for years. And as he and he was a psychologist, clinic, practicing psychologist. He also works with universities on a lot of tests on persuasion and things. And basically broke down ten different ones. We also find that uh, Dave Lacani, uh Caldini, some others, these are all professors that are known throughout the persuasion area that have worked with it. And they pretty much say there's ten laws. And so we're going to cover five of these. The first law is called reciprocity. Let me ask this. How many of you have ever received a Christmas card? Okay. How many have ever received one and realized that you didn't send them one? Okay. And your, object, your objective all of a sudden goes through your mind, you need to do what? Send them back. That's reciprocity. And reciprocity is one of those things that's innate and inborn into us. Matter of fact, our culture and our business society couldn't function without it. How would you feel if you went into a business without the idea that you're going to get some kind of value back? We probably wouldn't do it. So reciprocity is something that goes across all cultures. doesn't matter where you are in the world. Reciprocity works. Basically, if I give you something, you have the tendency to want to give back. How many of you ever get the uh, address labels? Donate, give me a donation, but the address labels are there. Ever thought of why do they do that? <laughs> How many keep them? How many throw them? Right? How many actually send something back? Eh, once in a while, right? That's about the right percentage. But here's the interesting thing. If you're doing mass marketing and if you're doing mass mailing like that, what's the expected return? What percentage? Yeah, one, two percent. That's pretty good. Guess what happens? You throw the labels in, what happens to the return? How much? Up to 15. It's that dramatic in some cases. Reciprocity. I've given you something. Now, does that mean that 100% Return a donation? No. But man, if you can get that two or three hundred percent increase, that's the power of reciprocity. Kinds of things. So, <clears throat> it covers all of those kinds of as aspects. The, uh, Kevin Hogan did a interesting test. Anybody interested in having dinner? Be invited to supper? In Minneapolis, uh, Dr. Hogan was working with a group of students. Opened up the Minneapolis phone book. You know how big that is. Randomly picked out names. No idea who these people were. Absolutely none. Had the students write out a chatty little Christmas card, like they were a long-lost nephew or something. Sent all these cards out, of course, with a return address to the student in Minneapolis. What do you suppose the results were? Well, they had about 50% returned. A Christmas card. They got a Christmas card from a total stranger. Okay. Reciprocity. Here was the kicker. Totally unexpected. Absolutely. 10% invited them to dinner. <laughs> you know, well, does it work? <laughs> so, again, that whole idea of reciprocity and how easily people can be persuaded or influenced in some way, shape, or form. So, reciprocity is really one of the strongest things that we can look at uh, with it. There's a... Uh, there's one little story that I think that how reciprocity can go for so long. There was an elderly woman that wasn't very wealthy. She had uh, suddenly gotten very ill, and she was in the hospital for about two weeks. So they just couldn't figure it out, doctor after doctor after doctor, trying to figure out what's going on with this woman. What is it? And so they said, okay, we got to call in somebody else. So they took her file, sent it over to an expert who usually... He was so swamped, he didn't stop for anything. I mean, he was booked for months. He pops open the file, looks at the name, looks at it, drops everything, looks at it, immediately goes over and checks out this woman and finds out what's going on and stuff and figures out what it is and takes care of her. She's well in a couple of days and she's off. 
Well, of course, she's pretty worried about this bill. She has no money. She has really no insurance. You know what's going to happen. Doctor comes back in, has her bill, hands it to her, and says, thank you. The margin is written, paid in full, one cold glass of milk. I don't know the rest of the story. But obviously, this woman had done something for this doctor way, way back. So reciprocity is something that sticks for years and years and years. So think about reciprocity. My question is, how do we do reciprocity in our business? Any thoughts or ideas on that? How do you institute reciprocity? Okay. How might we give something first? Now, how many of you give information? Okay. How many of you do informational meetings? How many of you give out samples? How many of you give out some type of coupon or some type of a trial? Okay. That's all instituting reciprocity in some way. Uh, we did uh, a little test. We were, hand we were mailing, we wanted to get into high-level executives. We would mail them a book one of Hogan's books or one of the influence books, we mail them a book with a letter to introduce ourselves. Depending upon the size of the company, what do you think our ability to get in to talk to that executive was? We found out that if they were under 100 million or under 150 million, we, about 90% of the time we got to talk to that executive on the first or second call. And they said, yeah, I got the book. I never had one before. The bigger companies, the percentage went down. It was more like about 50%. But still, if those of you in sales, if you could get 50% of their prospects to actually talk to you on the phone, would you be happy? <laughs> so again, reciprocity is the way that you work with it. What I'd like you to do is this. you got people next to you. If you don't have people next to you, get a little closer. But I'd like you to just take a second and think about when, how has reciprocity been applied to you? Has it? It's been applied to you. Think about that. How has reciprocity been applied to you in some way, shape, or form? And just talk to the person next to you. This also forces you to introduce yourself if you haven't. <laughs> okay, if I could ask you to, to stop, we're going to do this several times, but what were some of the reciprocity types that came out of that discussion? Somebody like to share, what were some of the ideas? Does it work? Yeah. 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 When we get into expectations, bring back up tips. We'll, we'll know why there's tip jars up. <laughs> Another one. How does it apply to you? I heard a lot of them. You had one about a realtor? My realtor sent me from last year, sent me a letter with a coupon for a free apple pie. Uh-huh. Okay. And how, how did you feel about that? How did that make you feel? Or what did you kind of react to that? <laughs> you almost you were obligated to do something now. Right. And just a little note saying that girls are appreciated. Yeah. And how much does the pie cost him? I'm betting it only costs him a couple bucks. A couple bucks. But if you give him one referral that he turns into a sale, what's his commission? Okay. 
So that's pretty good investment, isn't it, for the return? So that's reciprocity, but it's an inborn thing that people, when you give something to people, they tend to have the tendency to work with you or want to give back in some way, shape, or form. Extremely powerful. Matter of fact, it's so powerful that internationally it works. Uh, I believe it was Bangladesh. You know, of course, has always had terrible problems. They just, they just don't have an economy. And yet, when Mexico had the earthquake, guess who sent a check? Do you know what their explanation was? We had to. They had helped us. So reciprocity has that kind of power. Okay? Next one is contrast. Oh, matter of fact, something just on reciprocity. The other day, uh, a neighbor lady came over and was having problems with her TV. How many can't get those TVs programmed? <laughs> okay, you know what the situation was. So I went over there and spent about 15 minutes, got it all programmed, and she had another one I got that programmed for again. Nothing, nothing real bad. So I'm leaving. She says, take this. She's trying to give me a $20 bill. She says, take this. You need to. And she was almost crying because I wouldn't take it. And I finally said, give it to charity. And then she was okay. When you refuse reciprocity, it almost hurts the other person. So just keep that in mind. Kinds of things. Contrast. Contrast is an 